Hey, hey, hey guys! Welcome to another video. This is going to be something different to what we normally do because what you are looking at right now is the box for a Hornby train set. Yeah, gone all fancy over here. So, bottom line is, I uh, went on a coach trip yesterday, uh, being the uh, 21st, yeah, 21st of July. Went on, went on a coach trip, one of the destinations had a model railway shop. And I saw this in there. It was eighty five pound. Uh, was eighty five pound? Yeah, eighty five pound. Uh, there were two other sets. One was a Caledonian one, and the other was uh, I can't remember the name of it. But um, I bought this one because it presented the best value for money. Because of what you get, you get a loco, um, two trucks, and a um a brake fan and you also get a siding with this now i used to have a hornby train set back back in the day um mum bought it for me for christmas uh, i didn't really ask for it because uh, this is for serious people um now i was more into push along stuff back then and i ended up getting rid of it so i was an idiot but yeah i bought one my own money here this is the industrial freight set, and this one, um, it well chronicles, I guess, the uh, the big four. You know when the four companies joined together and made British Railways. Um, you can pause that if you'd like to read that before we go any further. And there is a list of features there on the box. So there's all the track pieces, the radius three curves, points, straights, uh, buffer beams, and the controller. And then here is the layout that it makes, which is very simple. Uh, I do have it on the track mat at the moment. Uh, on the back, it just explains um, what you can build. So that's your basic oval track. That's what the Caledonian... Um, engine had which was literally just an engine and two uh, a coach and a truck whereas this presented a lot more value this is kind of what we've got right now um, but if you were to add a basic oval and track pack A you'd get this set that we've got here so you can either buy a train set and a track pack and track pack A uh, no you can either buy a train set and track pack A or you could just buy a train set that's already got the sign in then you don't need to do about this. And then obviously it goes along to make something as elaborate as that, which I hope to do soon. And then obviously the things at the bottom. So yeah, that's the industrial freight train set. Well, the box. Now, if we zoom back, I have put the track mat out because obviously carpet um, even though it has been well trodden on, I didn't want any dust and dirt getting into the wheels and conking the train out. So here we have the engine in question. Uh, it's an uh, R40, R040. Oh God, everyone's going to be shouting at me. Uh, I don't know much about um, anything here, to be honest. Um, then I've just gotten into this. That's a Great Western, I'm going to say covered wagon. And then there's a Hutchinson's Co. Limited open open wagon. We'd call them trucks. And then a Great Western brake van towed. Now, the great thing about these is it works on two levels. Because if you are familiar with Thomas and Friends, Oliver's brake van is named Toad. And in one episode, he is introduced as... I'm with my brake van toad. Those are literally called brake van toads. So it's quite interesting. So as you can see, the engine is on a siding at the minute. And then of course you just have a standard loop of track that just goes all the way around and round and round and round. And then here's the track mat. It's basically what you can achieve if you really knuckle down. I mean, I think it would look great I think this is our this should be our goal for this series. This is our loco series. And then you know there's all these bits and pieces. So you know 
kind of annoying that they printed on the cars because what if you don't want the red car there? What if you want the red car heading out and you want the blue car at the station? This is the controller that you get with it. Uh, it's actually different compared to the one that I used to have back in the early 2000s. The early 2000s was the heaviest thing you'll ever have and the tiniest knob. Whack it up to maximum power and you would derail. Now, as I mentioned, I got this yesterday, so obviously it's been out and it's been played with and I have been enjoying it. And I'll also have a secondary video uh, showing you uh, a couple of things that I bought today. Um, so obviously, Hornby logo, there's the uh, speed, and then there is the directional changer. Uh, pretty much all made in China. So yeah, let's get it. Let's get her started. So I've already set the points, so then the engine can come out. So. So since it's a goods engine, I like to have it at half power. And I like to save full power for, oh, uh, how the hell, oh. <laughs> oh my God. That is perfect for the video. So we'll just bring everything back on to the, uh, everything back onto the track. Life lesson, people, make sure that your points are switched back to where you want the train to go because the tracks were set against it and it just went. Okay, everything sorted. And off we go again. And of course, you do get quite a lot for £85. Uh, you also get a re-railer. Now while that's going round, it's about half power, I'll show you this. So this is your re-railer, it actually has the name Hornby engraved into it, and it's ramped. So you place it down, you put your piece of rolling stock onto it, and then it will just glide, and there's these gaps here that allow the wheels to find the tracks so then it can just roll down so yeah now back to the train itself i've already got a shunting video up and ready which uh, i'll do after the next episode um so yeah it does look quite cool and in the right light it actually looks like i've got more track than than you think i mean now, you could easily be fooled into thinking that this is real, as in this. But yeah, there's not that much you can do. Um, you can do plenty of shunting, so if you want to, you can mix up the trucks and then, you know, spend a bit of shunting time getting the trucks back to how they should be. So now I'm going to try for some uh, low down train shots. Yeah, that's a good one. And then one from the side. Yeah, I never claimed to be the best at camera work. In fact, I never claimed anything. It's a nice runner. And one thing I have noticed about it, right, I'm gonna put it up to full power. The old Thomas train set went absolutely mental when you did that. It would It would have come off by now. Um, so clearly there's a restriction on it or something. Let's do some, uh, what I like to call Harrod the helicopter shots. I'm surprised that that fits in. Well, that makes a good photo and a half. So yeah, just the engine down there doing its job, which isn't really much to be honest. Maybe it would have been nice to get a load or something to go in the um, in the truck. So what we will do is, before we wrap up, uh, we'll take a better look at the Loco and the rolling stock, and I'll have a few things to say. 
So I'll stop it there. Very controlled, ladies and gentlemen. Very professional here, <laughs> he says. So I'll just take my handmade uh, remover or uncoupler. Uh, to be honest, at first I actually thought this set came with an uncoupler, but it didn't. It was a re railer. But I'm happy with that. So here is the locomotive in question. Uh, again, I don't know much about it. In fact, I know nothing all about it. Um, I think it said on the box it's an R040 or an R40 or an 040, however you say that. Um, it has the LMMR livery and a number four. Um, I don't know what this stands for. I think it's London Mainland or Midland something railway. Uh, you can interpret that, please let me know. Uh, it doesn't look like an engine that I recognise. It looks a little bit like Oliver from the Great Western. Um, you know, what with the windows like that and the coal bunker being like that. It is pretty well detailed for a starter engine. And you go, you've got the tanks on either side. It does look pretty snazzy. I, I really like it. And there's the bottom, just in case you were wondering about it. So yeah, just trying to do things through camera is the worst. So I'll give you a closer look at the uh, thing in the next episode. Now, these things have always been fascinating to me because on the real thing, there are these protrusions on either side of both the front and back ends. Can you see them right there at the top? What are those for? Are those vents? Because these covered wagons can often like have food in them or gold or pretty much anything. Um, you know, things that need to be covered up. So I'm wondering if those are vents or something. I really have no idea. But I love the design of these. Apologise, there's a fly in my room again. And I love how smooth this rolling stock is. I love how smooth everything is here. Because it's a brand new set. And here is the A. Hutchings, um, Hutchings Co. Limited. Um, Toddington. Uh, number 207. Same on both sides. Uh, fairly empty. <laughs> Just a standard truck. It's nice to get detailing on all sides and you get the detailing of the running boards. So probably uh, railway staff would stand on them. And now for the toad brake van. You see, if you just put toad's face on there, and maybe give it a lighter coat of grey. That would be Toad. Well, it is Toad. Uh, the Great Great Western never is. 20 tons, 56019. Again, this means nothing to me. Um, but it will do in due time. Honeyborn. And there is actually detailing of the handbrake there. Or whatever you'd call it. Uh, the Just the brake. Because it is a brake van. I... I am the least knowledgeable person when it comes to this sort of thing. But yeah, it's quite nice to have a train set again and one that I bought with my own money. So I think what I'll do is I'll just put it on the side in and you can watch my uh, parking skills. So we'll just zoom it in. So switch it to reverse, give it a little bit of power, just enough so it doesn't cut off on the points. You just have to try and measure it. And then there we go. Now that's shut off. Power's being applied, but because I've closed the points, there's no current. So yeah, that is the end of episode one of... I don't know what I'm going to call this. My Hornby Hobby. Something like that, maybe. Maybe, perhaps. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope to see you again in the next episode which I will film right now.